Now we want to digress back to Pascal's triangle. Uh, to write Pascal's triangle out, uh, we start with a 1, then a 1, and a 1. And uh, then we get 1, 2, 1. Now the way we get that, and everybody seems to have uh, understood that if they read it in the text, um, the 2 comes from the 1 and the 1 above it. The 2 is below and between the two 1's. 1 and 1 makes 2. The 1 here is below and between uh, nothing over here and the 1 here. Uh, regard this as a 0 and a 1 makes 1. And here 1 and 0 makes 1. Okay, next row. Uh, the 3 is here because 1 and 2 add up to 3. 3 in between the 2 and the 1 here because 2 and 1 gives us 3. And of course we get 1 and uh, equals 0 and 1 is 1. Uh, here 1 and 0 gives us 1 and so forth. So for example now down here the 15 comes from adding the 10 and the 5. Gives us 15. Okay, so we construct Pascal's triangle in that way. Now we want to apply Pascal. Well, let, let's observe uh, Pascal's triangle. Okay, um, we calculated uh, 7C3 previously, and we got that to be 35. Well, 7C3 is 35, and it turns out that 7C4, which we calculate over here as an example, is also equal to 35. Okay, well, this row. Let's take this row here. This row here corresponds to flipping two coins. Okay, now uh, there's one way of flipping two coins to get zero heads. Okay, zero, zero, there it is. Uh, maybe, yep, okay, zero heads. Um, and that's to get tails and tails. So there's one way to get no heads. There are two ways to get one head, and we should be very familiar with that by now. But we could get heads, tails, or we could get tails, heads. And then uh, to get two heads, there's one way. So these numbers correspond with flipping two coins to the number of ways of getting one, two, and three heads. Similarly, if we were to flip three coins, there would be one way to get zero heads, three ways to get one head, three ways to get two heads, and one way to get three heads. Now, if you don't understand that, you should go back and work that out, list the ways that uh, list the outcomes you could get for flipping three coins and verify that there is one way to get no heads, three ways to get one, three ways to get two, one way to get three heads. So that each row corresponds to flipping uh, a certain number of coins. The next row would be flipping four coins, one way to get no heads, four ways to get one, six ways to get two, four ways to get three, one way to get four. Uh, this continues on until we get down to, let's say, this row. Well, what does that correspond to? That corresponds to flipping, well, this is flipping four, so this would be five. This row would be six. This row would be the row corresponding to flipping seven coins. So we get seven coins. They could give us uh, one way to get no heads, seven ways to get one, 21 ways to get two, 35 ways to get three, 35 ways to get four, so there's our 7C3 and 7C4, and so on. Okay? Now, uh, let's consider uh, 6C2. What's 6C2? Well, 6C2 we can work out. That's 15, and that occurs here, and that in, that's in the row corresponding to flipping three, or flipping six coins, flipping three. Okay? And getting what? Zero, one, two heads. So the number of ways to get two heads and flipping six coins is 6C2. 6C2 is 15, and that does occur in the right position on the Pascal's triangle. So now we understand that Pascal's triangle is giving us a picture. Every row gives us a picture of how many ways there are to get various numbers of heads on. Uh, the corresponding number of coin flips.